next thing. Hi, my name is Jennifer. I've been working as a cartographer for the past nine years. Um, I started off working at the Atlas of Canada and Explore Australia and Lonely Planet. And currently I'm working as a freelance cartographer through um, InSpirit Card Graphics. So I created InSpirit Card Graphics because I felt that the human involvement and the artistic component was being lost as more and more companies move towards greater and greater automation. Um, this presentation was originally made for um, design students at the University of, of the Arts in London. Um, and they were doing a workshop challenging the conventions of map making. I decided to focus the, dis the discussion and um, adjust their topic slightly and challenge the conventions of modern map making. So modern is characterized by using the most up-to-date techniques, ideas, or equipment and denoting a recent style or trend in art, architecture, or cultural activity marked by a significant departure from tra traditional styles and values. So our most up-to-date tools are GIS software, remote sensing, computers, automation, satellites, GPS. Um, I don't have a problem with any one of these. They're all great, they all make things a lot easier, a lot quicker, but the problem arises when um, traditional cartographic styles and values get lost. So things like label placement, intuitive design, fonts and textiles, clarity, generalization, hierarchy of features and information. So these are all things that are really important communication tools that go well beyond language. So you may not be able to read Japanese, but you should be able to understand and interpret a Japanese map if these things are in place. So um, humans connect to things with greater human involvement. As automation increases, human involvement decreases. So both of these maps um, were made on the computer using GIS software. And um, as the computer dominates the process, we run into problems like cartographic style and conventions getting lost and having too much or too little information. So as I said, these maps were both made the same way using GIS software on the computer, GIS data. Um, the map on the left um, gives the impression that Exuma is just this island. It doesn't show that it's actually an island chain. There's no inset map at the top. There's no way of knowing that actually it's a whole chain of islands. Um, it also has the, the towns and airports in a serif font. And typically a serif font is used to indicate a natural feature. Um, we've got land features and towns written in blue. Um, typically that's used to suggest a water feature. And I'm not sure why we've got an island, an airport, and a town in red. Um, so it's just, it's not quite, um, you are a bit more reliant on language than say this one where you can tell, okay, so it is a whole chain of islands. And we'll zoom into the main one to compare the two. Um, we've got the, um, all the man-made features are in a sans serif font, and all the natural features are in a serif font, so the water features are italicized to suggest a flowing natural feature. Um, we've got more natural colors for things like national parks, contour lines, and mountain peaks, and more artificial colors for things uh, like the built environment. Um, another problem that is also, or also encountered is um, so things can get cluttered and illegible. So this map I found in the National Post. There's no <laughs> way you can read that map. It's piled on top of each other. You have to zoom into every single one of those points and what National Post reader is actually going to do that. Um, the one on the left, or sorry, yeah, the left, um, so for me, there's a lack of human connection. Without being able to read that title, I would have no idea what this map is about. I don't know what municipalities they are. I don't know where they are in relationship to 
um, Mount Pelier, the state capital, or Burlington, the largest city. So I have no way of connecting myself to this landscape. <laughs> Um, so as I said before, computers are excellent tools, softwares are great, they speed things up, they make editing way easier, easier updating existing maps a lot faster. Um, but it's important to remember that the computer is not the cartographer, the software package isn't the cartographer. Um, it's still the map maker who is integral to the process and you can use as many tools as you want. You're not restricted to one software package although licensing and cost does play a factor. But you, you can use as many tools as you want. I've even used, in some of my work, um, I've used pencil crayon and inserted it into a GIS. So you can use whatever you want to convey your message, whatever gives you the right character, look, feel, whatever communicates your message the clearest. So by definition, cartography is the science the, and the art of map making. So we've looked at what happened when we leaned too far towards the science side, and now we'll just look quickly at what happens when we lean, we lean too far towards the art side. So again, we uh, run into the problem of losing cartographic style and convention, and we also lose functionality. So this map here, these are really um, popular. I see them all over the place in stores. But through um, font size, it suggests that Bakersfield is a lot bigger than San Francisco. And we know that's not the case. It also suggests through design that places like Los Angeles and Sacramento span the entire state. Um, the map on the right looks more conventionally like a map, and it's used for the Toronto Public Libraries. The problem is, is that these symbols cover entire city blocks. And they're piled on top of each other, they obscure roads. Even knowing the city really well, I wouldn't be able to use this map to find a library. And then we also have the problem of things not being to scale, not geo-referenced, and being misleading. So this map here of Kensington Market, I love this map so much. Um, its hand-drawn scribbliness really reflects the character of the area. The problem is, is that you don't really know how far it would take to walk from Dundas to College Street. You also can't tell that College, Bathurst, Spadina, and Dundas are major roads with streetcars running along them, and all the streets inside Kensington Market are little laneways. Um, the map on the right I found actually on a site advertising map makers for hire. This map to me could not be used by a tourist. Again, we've got, I, I, I suppose they're top sites, I'm not sure, but they're spanning enormous city blocks. Um, there's no street labels, I don't think enough streets are shown, I don't even really know how accurate those streets are. Um, it's just far too abstract to be useful. So in conclusion, my definition of cartography is it's the balance of the art and the science of map making and it's still the cartographer who is integral to the map making process. Well, who's going to argue with that? <laughs> Do we have any questions? Uh, excellent. You've articulated my frustrations for the last 20 years, and I feel GIS is without soul. <laughs> um, but I wonder if part of the problem is when you look at published maps in the academic, and it also includes diagrams and tables, nothing's being enforced. Mm -hmm. Stuff that just, like the economic historians put up these categories. Yeah. Same with some of those stuff. You can't possibly interpret it. Yeah, I so I think some of it is at the editorial and journal level is, mm. is allowing this to happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree entirely with you. Um, it does seem like maps are, instead of holding more long-term value, they're just being produced as quick throwaway items. Whereas... Um, Ugly affectations. Yeah, yeah. 
I suppose you could make the argument with uh, some of the whimsical artistic maps that it presumes it, it would work only if, it, if you had a pre-existing knowledge of an area and so on. Um, well, what I'm, I'm finding through freelancing is often the projects I get are, um, so initially people think, you want a nice looking map, let's get a graphic designer. So they get a graphic designer and then they run into problems, well, this map doesn't actually work on a practical level, and so I usually get their kind of abandoned projects. <laughs> because it's just, it looks nice, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, maps actually are, they have a sweet function. <laughs> well, I was just to say, we had one graduate student from the course he took before he came here. His instructor would deduct one out of ten every time he used the GIS software default. Good. So, so this is a key in education is, okay, these are the defaults now. You know, you start the software, but you've got to know the art and science mm -hmm. to get, get the best result. And hopefully that's what universities and colleges are teaching, not just mm -hmm. press these buttons. So at least change the north. Yeah. <laughs> I actually met some people on a hike uh, who were pulled out of their jewelry makers. And they were pulled out of retirement to um, go to the University of Hong Kong and teach jewelry design because they were running into the problem where their students all used the same software and they weren't getting much creativity. So they were teaching the old way of doing it. Hmm.